Alright, I'm back. We need to have this talk. I was gonna come back till next week, alright? But after the bullshit that happened today, you're damn right I got something to say, okay? Now, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you already see the header of what it's about. You probably remember if you followed me on Twitter a couple months ago, I had talked about how there's a specific place that doesn't want to do business at the time and didn't know how to go about business, I should say. And I didn't want to talk about it too much. I was kind of vague about it due to the fact that, because of business reasons, I didn't want to throw anyone under, the anyone under the bus. But today, that shit is coming out. And I say that because after the shit on the road, driving, listen to the radio, Nerd Street Gaming, or Third Street Gaming, whatever the fuck you want to call yourselves, y'all had the nerve to have some type of interview on the radio. Which is like, are you serious? Are you, are you fucking serious here? Okay, so I'm going to hear out what the fuck you guys say after what you said to me in the past, alright, which was a bunch of bullshit, we will talk about that, we will, but you talked in your interview about how esports is on the rise, and we're making sure we do our best to import talent and fuck the local talent, we want to import the talent so that people, amateurs, will play with the pros, that's what you said. And you talked about Counter-Strike and possibly StarCraft. And I'm going to talk about this in a bit because you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Let me rewind back to a couple months since some of you don't know the story behind all of this, okay? And this is where it's fucked up, all right? So a couple months ago, I'll say during summertime, I went to Nerd Street Gaming twice, right? I went first and I talked to this, this guy who... Very short kid or whatever. Um, was very nice to me. Right? When I first went, introduced myself. This was business. You know what I mean? Introduced myself. Was very nice. We had a good talk. And he was like, if you come back next week, um, you know, the person who, you know, the proprietor who runs the actual place will be here and we can all have this talk. Which is sound all things would go. Everything was good. Everyone talked nicely. Everybody respected each other. Not to say that the next week the shit happened. Of course, it was completely different. So when I go there, okay, you want to talk about fucking arrogance? You want to talk about talking down to someone? And look, I put it like this. It took everything from me not to punch that dude in his fucking face. Because the way he was talking down to me, mind you, as I'm talking to him respectfully, because it's business, you want to talk down to me like I'm some type of fucking clown. Nah. And the thing is, I'm talking to boss man on the phone, and I'm like, if that wasn't about business... And someone had talked to me that way. I, yo, he got his koofy smacked the fuck off. That's what would have happened to him, alright? But, let's get into what happened. I go there. And the entire point of me going there was to see if we can make a deal with, um, you know, UGL to make a deal with, uh, you know, with Nerd Street Gaming to bring, you know, some tournaments to the local scene here in Philadelphia. That was the point. Now, you would think that, hey, this would grow the scene, this would make it better, and... Everybody before this, because tournament organizers are supposed to support each other. There's supposed to be more than one game in town. Am I correct? That's how your scene grows. When I say this, they gave me every resistance and pushback possible. And because they were so fucking arrogant and had diarrhea in the mouth, they told me everything that was bad about them. And I just sat there and be quiet, just let them talk. You know what I mean? So, here we go. When I go back in, and I talked to the same person I did before, alright? Guy was a little, little standoffish this time as opposed to last time. I reintroduced myself. He said, oh yeah, I remember you. But wasn't in the same type of um, welcoming, uh, you know, warmth, uh, was it welcoming type of dialogue as last time. Now, with that said, he brings on the guy who's running the place. And the guy literally, and I say this, literally looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Okay? Literally. So when I'm talking to him, we're talking about, you know, about the fighting game community and how we can, you know, we're just trying to make it bigger and we can make a deal to where we, you know, have a production here. We'll bring our equipment, we'll have our production there, and, you know, there, and, you know, everybody wins. They did not like that at all. At all. They got mad and was like, first off, the owner himself, the guy was running, he was like, I don't know much about the fighting game community. He was like, this guy here that you talked to before, he's the only person who knows anything about the fighting game community. Now, mind you, the guy I talked to, he has to be about 19 years old. He doesn't know much, okay? If that may be in his early 20s, maybe. Maybe. But okay. Owner doesn't know much, all right, who's running the place. He relies on one guy, one guy, to pretty much facilitate 
all the type of things for the fighting game community. Now, here's the thing. I went on a Saturday afternoon, right? Mind you, this is a local, this is a spot that's open, almost like an arcade that's open. There was not one customer, one gamer in there on a Saturday afternoon, okay? It was just me and them working. And there was another guy in the back working. So three people there working, okay? And he goes on about how, first off, he's like, who are you? Excuse me? Who am I? And the thing is, they had heard about UGL, but they was like, who are you? Like, per person, individual. So I start running down my accolades to them. Start telling them where I played here in the city, and in New York, and in New Jersey, and in Florida, and in Las Vegas. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And in Baltimore, and everywhere else. I'm running down my fucking resume. And not in an arrogant way. Just to give them, you know... The, you know, some some uh, some history of what I've done, you know, in the fighting game community. And, you know, and just try to talk to them and understand that I can be an asset to you. We can be an asset. You know, the UGL can be an asset to you. And the one guy who's, like I said, the short guy, he's like, like I said, like 19. He's like, never heard of you. <laughs> just like that. What are you, fuck, serious? First off, you're probably too young to even remember what was going on back then. But then, when I say that, the owner's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's like... We've only been here for about two, three years, okay? So, and I said to him in response, so you came in here two, three years ago in Northern Liberties when the gentrification started. That's when you came here. Because literally, if you walk around, if you literally, you can look right across the street where they're stationed, all these buildings are being remade. Anyone knows in Northern Liberties, especially on Girard, when you cross Girard, all right, that they took all those people and kicked them out of their houses, raised the property taxes, and that's what they're doing. Anybody in Philadelphia will fucking tell you this, okay? So you came in at the time that, you know, gentrification was happening. And when he's saying this, mind you, this is how he's, at, he's talking to me. <laughs> yeah, this is when we came in, yeah. This is when we came in. Mind you, hipster-ass dudes is acting like this towards me. Okay, okay. So, while they're talking and they're giving me all this information, the owner admits to me, that he doesn't know shit about fighting games, like I said. He doesn't know anything. But the other guy is the only person he had. He turns around and says to me, maybe, just maybe, we should stop uh, streaming Street Fighter V. And that we should go back to when the hype was there for Street Fighter. Because the best hype in history was Street Fighter IV. I'm looking around like, is this dude serious? Is he on something? Excuse me, are, are you home? Like... So we're just supposed to forget the years of Street Fighter 2, Championship Edition, Turbo Edition, all right, EX. We're supposed to forget the, the, amount, the immense hype here in Philadelphia when Alpha hit. We're supposed to forget that, right, in all its renditions. We're supposed to forget that type of hype, all right. Then you had Third Strike. So we're going to supposed to forget all this because you said that Street Fighter 4 is the epitome of hype. You can tell if you haven't already noticed. There is a generational gap here. Okay? There's a generational gap here. Internet, I should say gap. And that's what it is. Because the guy goes on and talks about how they don't support the local scene here. I said, do you have any players who come from Port Richmond? No. Any from here in Northern Liberties? No. How about Bridesburg? No. How about... Around Bridge Street, because that's where a lot of hardcore players are from. How about Bridge Street? No. North Philly? No. How about more up in the Northeast? Wissanomi? No. Um, what about Mayfair? Hardcore Mayfair group. Hardcore up there. No. Five Points? No. Holmesburg? No. What the fuck are you doing then? You are a local. What are you doing? Well, we get our guys from Big E Gaming. Excuse me? Excuse me. You know who Big E is, right? That, that, that's not the point. First off, if we're going to get to the history of Big E, you have to understand, in the 80s, no one knew who Big E was. In the 90s, no one knew who Big E was. Like I said, 80s, Karate Champ era, no one knew who he was. 90s, that Street Fighter era came through, no one knew who he was. To the mid-2000s, no one knew who Big E was, because he wasn't around. Okay? Now, this is not the not Big E, because understand what he's doing, what he's doing, all right, in the community, with the internet, and, and being, you know, trying to, you know, have his own tournaments and everything, 
That's fine. So you got to applaud him for that. You know what I mean? But here's the thing as well. They go on to say, we don't, not need, want your help. Because if you decide to run tournaments here, that will piss on Big E and what he does here. Newsflash, fucking idiots, alright? Can't be the only game in town. You have to understand, so, so let me get straight. If we go back and we look at arcades, we can only have one arcade throughout the entire city? We can only have one tournament throughout the entire city? No, that's not how it works. Everybody gets along because why? When you have more tournament organizers in a local scene, that grows your local scene. That's what it does. But they said, no, we're going to stick with Big E. And I asked very politely, while they're being nasty to me, and even though I'm, the way I'm telling it to you doesn't sound nasty, like I said, their tone of voice and the way they're puffing up their chest, like I said, it's a visual thing. It's, it's, a, it's a cue. You know what I mean? You can tell. They say, well, he's given us a couple games for our, uh, our streams, for our fighting game community. That's it? That's why? So, let me get straight. Alright? He gave you a couple games, digitally, because he's got the hookup somewhere. He gave you a couple games, and that's why you feel as though you're so loyal to him. Where, to be honest, if you're holding your own tournaments, actually, that makes him look better. Because you're going to tell people, like myself, idiots, that that's where you got your stuff. And then people will say, well, why are we dealing with you? You're a small local. We'll just go to him. Cutting the middleman out. But this is what they're telling me. Okay? Now, with this said, they go on because they just keep talking and fucking talking and talking. I'm like, yeah, stupid. Keep fucking talking. Here's the thing. All right? They showed me their stream setup. They showed me how they have the dual cameras on the players that go into each corner. Instead of seeing the characters in each corner when they fight, they actually have the players there so you can see the player reactions. That's what they showed me. I don't know why you're showing me your setup, but they're showing me everything, dude. And I'm thinking to myself, for people who don't want to deal with me or deal with UGL, you sure how telling me a lot. But I'm keeping my mouth shut. Okay? So I said, look. Is it any way possible that we can make a deal? Because I put it like this. Yes, Big E has his tournaments. Right? But the games he's running, we don't run. And on top of that, who said we're going to do it on the same days that he runs his tournaments? We're not going to step on his feet. Makes no sense whatsoever. Like I said, lack of communication from their end. All right? They're obviously, they're not, they're not listening. Like I said, they were so defensive and trying to push me out that it's ridiculous. So then, when I say that, they start making these outrageous fucking claims. That's right. So if we wanted to make a deal with them, we would have to give them a ton of money, all right, to rent the place out. And on top of this, we have to bring our own equipment. We can't use their equipment, even though they got a ton of equipment. But you're paying for the space. A ton of money. And then on top of this, the stream, the production that you are running belongs to them. If you don't get the fuck out of here with this, are you serious? And like I said, and the waiters sit like the entire time, smiles, shitty and grin smiles on their faces. Like, yeah, we know you're not going to do it. And this is what we're doing purposely to get you out the door. I've never seen anyone so unfucking professional in my life. My, not Mind you, just no common sense whatsoever. And then they talk about how, like I said, they don't know anything about the FGC. Their big thing is Counter-Strike. And they talked about, and again, not knowing when to shut the fuck up, you were telling me exactly how you're trying to bring in players, import players from other places, and you're helping them with their fucking visas. For the same thing that you said on the radio. You haven't changed. So... You're spending money, and they also admitted to me, they're not making any money whatsoever. They make money off of their software company. That's how they get their money. That's how they're able to expand and everything else. That's where it's from, not from their tournaments. So they're constantly in the fucking red. Need I remind people that smash Adelphia here is tenfold? And I say this because they tell me, and, and here's why I love this part. Because they like to bring up the fact that they've had one notable player, one popular player, the entire time. Because for those who don't know, they host Go For Broke. The first thing they threw in my face, hey man, we have PG Punk here. 
He brought 40 people out here to the, the tournament. They literally had 40 people at the tournament. He did that. PG Punk brought 40 people out to watch him or compete. 40 people. 40. I don't understand how that's a chest beating moment. How that's a bragging moment. Because it's only 40 fucking people. And this is, mind you, they're running Street Fighter. Now, if you go back to the tournaments of the past and you see how many people were playing Street Fighter back in the day, four, you can wet your ass with 40 fucking people. Don't sit here and tell me. All right? Street Fighter, popular ass game, popular player, and you only pulled 40 people that you're going to brag about that shit. I swear to God, man, this is a local, all right? They're not big time. They run go for broke, but pretty much if you go there, you gotta, you're going to get broke if you got to travel because they ain't putting out money. You should see the prize pots. They're a fucking joke. But, 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 let's talk about how within all of this, like I said, they're still being arrogant. They're still acting like they're big time because they have Counter-Strike. And apparently, as you heard me say earlier in the radio interview, they're thinking about StarCraft. That's your moneymaker. Counter-Strike. Need I remind you that you're nowhere near as big as DreamHack when they run Counter-Strike. No, no, you're not. You're nowhere even in the ballpark. So, you have a local like Smash It doesn't even matter what, 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 uh, what game it is. Like I said, popular game will bring players if they support the local scene. Local players go there. And of course, as you know, people will come from different states Possibly different countries, depending. And you're like, oh, there's that guy, but that's it. And you, you know, you get a chance to play. But the fact that you purposely alienate the local community, because like I said, you didn't have no one there when I fucking went there, and you don't know any of the area, just to get popular players and import them and think that, hey, people will come to see them. Does anybody see the problem here? Once again, we have a Hollywood problem on our hands. We have a tier list when it comes to player problems on our hands. You're a fucking local. If you want to make money, or at least stay somewhat busy, then you should pander to the local audience. It's that simple. But you don't do that. Which is, I don't know how you're a local and think that you're going to be a superstar. You're a local that is has no idea what's going on in the community, and then you lie to me about fucking Otacon, and you bag on them so bad because I was like, you know, we're trying to work with other, uh, you know, other, co you know, conventions. You know, we've, we've done MomoCon. We've done DragonCon. You know, we're trying to work with Otacon. They're like, Otacon? Otacon won't let you do anything. We know the guys over there. They stumped us out and would not let us do anything. I find that funny because um, we were at Otacon last year. And we'll be at Otacon this year. So I find it funny that you're the type of people who blames everyone else for their lack of communication and their behavior, instead of looking in the mirror and say, where did we go wrong? How can we fix this? To be praising yourselves over, patting each other on the back for 40 people when you should be looking at yourselves and saying, we've got a top tier player here. We should have more. Maybe we could have more outreach. But instead, you decide to rely on the internet. And while the internet is a good tool, you have to understand you got to do more than that. All right? Advertising is a big deal. If it means getting print on paper or slapping on, on uh, telephone poles, then that's what you do. But it seems like the art of communication is gone. And for you to think that this is something that's, you know, oh, it's going to get better. We did a news interview. No, because people in UGL already know. I've already talked to the local people here. I've talked to the OGs here and a lot of local people here who still play to this day. And after they heard what the fuck happened, they was like, fuck them. Fuck them. That's seriously, that's what they did. You alienated, you came in off a gentrified fucking area because you thought you, you know what you were doing. You alienated all the people around you for one person, mind you. And you rely on one kid and mind you, and here again, diarrhea in the mouth because the person who was running the place told me, okay, that that guy, who's he's, he's the only aficionado of the FGC, they don't even pay him for that. They don't pay him for his production. They don't pay him to work there when it comes to video games. They got to pay him. Y'all ready for this? They got to pay him as a janitor. So when he's not doing streams, he's got to go mop the floor. That's how bad they doing right now. 
So when you see all this shit, oh yeah, we just got another, you know, we just got the building next to us and we're going to expand. Like I said, that money is coming from their software company. Not from making money doing this game and shit. Torment organizers, again, should be very cordial to other torment organizers. So we all get along, we can all work together, we can make this thing better than what it already is. And for you to act like a bunch of Petulant fucking children. You have to excuse me. That's why I haven't come back in a while because I've been kind of sick. Okay? To act like a bunch of fucking children. Because we got this place and we ran it out and we got some PCs. Stupid fucks. At the end of the day, you may barely stay afloat when it comes to this. And I say stay afloat because without your software company, you would have been closed down a long time ago. And you fucking know that. But you don't have any support here locally. Any. And you just think that, hey, if we just put on Go For Broke, we'll be cool. Y'all fail to realize, if you ever watch stream of Go, to Broke, Go For Broke, it looks bigger and they explain that to me as well. The reason why they do what they do in the background, you see people walking around in the background, they tell people to do it. That's right. They lower the lights and they put the screens up and they want people, it may look larger than what it is, but it's not. It's a very small place. You're very cramped in that place. So it makes it look busier than what it is, if anyone's ever walked in there. But for the person who's running the place to tell me, yeah, we have a camera here, and so when you're on stream, and you know, it, it shoots it over in the background so that it makes it look more busier than what it really is. This is the shit that you're telling me while being arrogant towards me. You're talking down to me, but you're giving me all your fucking secrets. See? Being nice to people, face to face, or just being just a little humble, just a, just a little, just a little. And you could have avoided this situation. I've been sitting on this for months. You can ask anybody in UGL, because they already knew. They already knew. I want to do a fucking video so bad on this, but I waited. And I waited to today simply because I heard that radio interview. Because it insists upon itself more than it really is. That's what it is. Once again, we've got people in our community. And I can't even say in the local community at this point because you're not making any scratch off it. Seriously, you're open X amount of hours and no one's in there. On a weekend? Nay, tell me, people, tell me one time you have been to an arcade, a big arcade on a weekend, all right? Or just an arcade in general on a weekend, on a Saturday afternoon, and nobody's in there. <laughs> they got more subs than people. You got more subs than staff. Then you take me into the back and you show me exactly how everything monitors. Because you have that computer right there in the back behind the curtain. Yes, I'll let them know everything. That's what happens when you act like a fucking dick. But yet, you can't help yourself. You gotta brag about it. As if you've accomplished something. Instead of realizing, like I said, our community needs to grow. We can all work together. As far as I'm concerned, I don't want to fucking work with you. At all. And I've already, listen, I've already put the word out. Word's been put out for a long time now. And every time I talk to people, they're like, yeah, fuck them. We're not going over there. We haven't been over there since. You know what I mean? Now that everyone knows what's going on, hope you can stash money. <laughs> but at the end of the day, understand people. And I don't give a shit if you like this video or if you thumb it down. All right? The truth has been said. You've been exposed, and community and torment organizers understand from here on out that you should try and work with each other. You should try to treat each other like human beings instead of talking down to each other like they're some type of lower fucking subject. The fuck is wrong with you? At the end of the day, we still play video games. At the end of the day, we still put on tournaments. That's all we do. We're no more or less important than each other. Do you understand that? And the fact that someone actually had the audacity to pull that with me. Like I said, that was business. So I couldn't react like I wanted to fucking react. You know what I mean? Now my boss man on the phone. He's like, yo, fuck them. And I can't believe they did this. And that's, that's, that's insane. And he can hear it in my voice how pissed off I am. He can hear it because, like I said, you do that shit in real life, there's going to be fucking consequences. Hipster ass people thinking that they all of a sudden run the place. Don't know shit. Admit they don't know shit, but they gonna tell you how it's done. 
Well, we've never heard of you, so you don't fucking matter. Really? That's how it worked. So I guess if I wind up all the old Philly OGs here and you and they told you the same shit and you said, well, we never heard you, don't matter. Like I said, you're like 19 years old. You ain't gonna know shit, bruh. I guess you only know people if they're on the world stage. And he once said to me, he was like, yo, he was like, but I was next to Justin Wong once. So you was next to him. Did you play him? No, I was just next to him. Well, we all been next to him. He had every fucking convention. Who gives a shit? This is the mentality that these fucking people over there have. And I'm telling you now, if they see this video and you want to say it's bullshit, I will come right to your fucking place, to your face this time. And I'll let you know how it is. Test me, please. Anyways, I'll be back next week. I shouldn't even have to make this fucking video today, but it had to be fucking done. I'll talk to y'all then. Y'all be safe. Have a good one. Keep playing. Keep practicing. Remember, your community comes first. Locals come first before you decide you want to go run to a fucking convention. Or go run to Evo. Or CEO. Get your weight up first. Here. Locally first. Before you start spouting that superstar shit. I'll talk to y'all then. Y'all be safe. I'm out.